How to use the FTC rules outline as a pro negotiating tool. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy here today with Amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. On today's show, we are providing you with an in-depth analysis of the FTC rules and the text that you need to make sure you read. It's outlined and bolded on our website. We will cover how it can help all of you car buyers out there who are wanting to hold an unscrupulous dealer's feet to the fire and come away with a good car deal. You're probably tired of walking away. Well, with this in hand, <laughs> you don't need to walk away. You can bargain with them. Believe me, this is a very satisfying conversation to win in a dealership. It will take some spine like Liz demonstrates and this viewer comments on, yes, 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 please, Elizabeth, do more role play videos. You were absolutely savage on the cash buyer <laughs> video. Okay, thank you. But I can tell you that I really dislike losing to a lying crook. What's interesting is that the FTC, an agency within the U.S. government, uses the word Kevin just mentioned to describe car dealers, unscrupulous. Here it is defined. Unscrupulous. It says here, having or showing no moral principles, not honest or fair, unscrupulous landlords might be tempted to harass existing tenants. That could easily be read to say, unscrupulous dealers might be tempted to harass car buying customers. Might be tempted? Other similar words to describe this classless group of dealers include unprincipled, unethical, immoral, untrustworthy, corrupt, fraudulent, all of which are the complete opposite of being ethical and honest. And dealers wonder why most people can't stand them. The opposite of ethical and honest, folks, the word unscrupulous is a significant charge and it was chosen by the FTC to describe car dealers. An agency of the U.S. government used it without reservation in the outline they produced to argue for changes in the car business, folks. Let's take a deeper look. What exactly is unscrupulous behavior? Use the adjective unscrupulous to describe someone who behaves in a dishonest or unethical way. Unscrupulous behavior is the unfortunate resort of many ambitious people, and it's the immoral stuff they do to make success more attainable. Mm -hmm. Isn't that incredible? On that note, let's dig into the Power Pack document the FTC put out. If you happen to have the abbreviated outline downloaded and printed off our website, we'll dig it out now and get your hands on a highlighter. We're going to flip back to page four of our abbreviated and now underlined version and share the paragraph in the middle of the page under the heading, Deception and Unfairness in the Motor Vehicle Marketplace. It reads, The FTC received more than 100,000 complaints in each of the past three years regarding new and used motor vehicle sales, financing, service and warranties, and rentals and leasing, and complaints about motor vehicle transactions are regularly in the top 10 complaint categories tracked by the agency. Top 10, folks. The FTC uses its authority under Section 5, to stop deceptive and unfair acts or practices in the motor vehicle marketplace. That statement warrants reading a second time because it's proof that there's no need to wait for the implementation of these new FTC rules. That's right. The law is already on your side and the FTC is already acting on it. The FTC uses its authority under Section 5 to stop deceptive and unfair acts or practices. Furthermore, a representation, omission, or practice is deceptive if it is likely to mislead consumers acting reasonably under the circumstances and is material to consumers. That is, it would likely affect the consumer's conduct or decisions with regard to a product or service. Some deception cases involve omission of material information, disclosure of which is necessary to prevent the claim, practice, or sale from being misleading. Deceptive information distorts the marketplace and thus these false and misleading statements are unlawful regardless of the intent to deceive. Ah. Unlawful, folks. Let's unpackage that a bit further. Continuing on, it reads, a practice is considered unfair under Section 5 if, one, it causes or is likely to cause substantial injury. Read that financial injury. Yep. And then number two, the injury is not reasonably avoidable by the consumers because the dealer insists that it is mandatory or non-negotiable. And number three, the injury is not outweighed by benefits to the consumers or competition, like window etching. That is completely yeah. worthless junk. Chronic problems confronting consumers in the sales, financing, and leasing process include advertising misrepresentations and unlawful practices related to add-ons and deceptive pricing. When a dealer surprises you with a fee and says it's not negotiable, that is deceptive pricing because the fee unfairly adds to the sale price of the vehicle. Right. Now, let's go on to the last paragraph on the same page under the heading, Advertising Misrepresentations. The FTC has brought many cases concerning misrepresentations regarding key pricing aspects of a vehicle purchase 
including the price of the vehicle, the availability of discounts and rebates, the monthly payment amount for a finance purchase or lease, or the amount due at signing. We're not lawyers, folks, but this paragraph is chock full of language any good consumer protection attorney would have a heyday with. But there's more. Yes. At the top of page five, it reads, Other misrepresentations regarding financial terms that have been the subject of FTC complaints have included whether an offer pertains to a purchase or lease and whether the dealer or consumer is responsible for paying off negative equity. In example, the outstanding debt on a vehicle that is being traded in as part of another vehicle purchase. And according to other FTC actions, some dealers have lured potential buyers through financial incentives incidental to the purchase, such as the promise of a valuable prize. Like the you've won flyers that come in the mail. Yes, misleading advertisements can cause significant consumer harm and reduce competition amongst law-abiding dealers. When dealerships advertise prices, discounts, or other terms that are not actually available to typical consumers, those consumers end up selecting that dealership instead of others and spending time visiting it and transacting with it under false pretenses. Think about that. The good dealers get hurt because of the unethical behavior by others. That's right. There's more dynamite in the next section titled unlawful practices relating to add-ons and deceptive pricing. This is great, you guys. The word unlawful is key here. Another key consumer protection concern is the sale of add-on products and services in a deceptive and unfair manner. Commonly offered add-ons include extended warranties, service and maintenance plans, payment programs, guaranteed automobile or asset protection like GAP or GAP insurance, emergency road service, VIN etching, and other theft protection devices and undercoating. Wow, all of those are very common products we always hear about. Thousands of dollars wasted right there, folks. Yes, and this document agrees with that. Yes. It goes on to say, individual add-ons can cost consumers thousands of dollars and can significantly increase the overall cost to the consumer in the transaction. A significant consumer protection concern is consumers paying for add-ons without knowing about them or expressly agreeing to them. To be lawful, you as a car buyer must expressly agree. Instead, you're being told they're already on the car and they can't be taken off. Exactly. Yeah. This document explains this further. The protracted and paperwork heavy vehicle buying process can make it difficult for consumers to spot add-on charges, mm -hmm. particularly when advertised prices do not mention add-ons. Ads almost never mention all the add-ons. Totally illegal. If consumers are financing the vehicle, they then undergo a separate financing process, which can include wading through a thick stack of dense paperwork filled with fine print. For example, according to an FTC complaint, Consumers were required to complete a stack of paperwork that ran more than 60 pages and required more than a dozen signatures. You guys know about this. You put up with it. Right. This paperwork can include hidden charges for add-on products and services, causing consumers to purchase those add-ons without knowing about them or agreeing to them or without knowing or agreeing to the cost or other key terms. Unscrupulous dealers. There's that word unscrupulous. Yes, unscrupulous dealers are able to slip these additional costs past consumers unnoticed and into purchase contracts through a variety of means, including by not mentioning them at all or by focusing consumers' attention on other aspects of the complex transaction, such as monthly payments, for example. Monthly payments, exactly. The FTC really knows what they're talking about. Indeed, they do. This focus on monthly payments, which might increase only marginally with the addition of prorated add-on costs, it wraps up with this point. In other instances, dealers might wait until late in the transaction to mention add-ons and then do so in a very misleading manner. <laughs> Everything we're discussing right now is on the FTC download available for free on our website. You must take it with you when you visit a dealership. In the very near future, that's exactly what Liz is going to do to demonstrate how to do that. She will be using this outline to defend herself Bring it on. against the finance officer's claims. Let's move ahead now to page six. For example, according to an FTC study, there were situations where dealers waited until the financing stage to mention add-ons after consumers believed that they had agreed on terms. And even though many add-ons have nothing to do with financing, and were not mentioned at all during the sales process or when prices were initially negotiated. According to the FTC enforcement actions. Take note of this folks, this point outlines FTC enforcement actions. Yes, according to the FTC enforcement actions, 
Dealers also have represented that add-ons are required when in fact they are not. It says it right here in this document, you guys. They are not. And they have misrepresented the purported benefits of add-ons and have failed to disclose material limitations. Right. Indeed, in a recent enforcement proceeding brought by the FTC, the agency cited a survey finding that 83% of consumers from 10 dealership locations within the same motor vehicle dealership group, they were charged for add-on products or services that they did not authorize or as a result of deceptive claims that they were required to purchase them. That bears repeating, as a result of deceptive claims that they were required to purchase them. Claims by dealers that you are required to pay for things that they say are already added is a complete lie. And dealers have received big fines for this. The law already forbids dealers from forcing you to pay for things that you do not want. Illustrating Liz's point perfectly is Section 3, titled Law Enforcement Actions and Other Responses. To address these types of unfair and deceptive practices in the motor vehicle industry, the Commission has brought enforcement actions and engaged in other efforts. In the last 10 years, the Commission has brought more than 50 law enforcement actions and led two law enforcement sweeps to protect consumers in the motor vehicle marketplace, including one that involved 181 state enforcement actions. This is big time in the favor of the car buyer, folks. My biggest weapon against dealers has always involved some level of discussion about the law. That's their kryptonite. There's more on page seven under this heading. States have also taken measures to address consumer protection issues in the motor vehicle industry. In addition to participating in law enforcement sweeps with the FTC, state regulators and attorney generals have independently filed more than 200 actions alleging deceptive and unlawful conduct by motor vehicle dealerships across the country. Liz, you often bring case history of lawsuits against dealers with you, don't you? <laughs> yes, I do. One of my favorites I'd be using in the current market is the April 2022 $10 million lawsuit against Napleton Auto Group. The lawsuit says the dealerships often snuck hundreds or thousands of dollars in illegal fees into the auto financing paperwork that they gave people to sign. The dealerships charged customers for products like extended warranties and service plans, charges that were typically added to the amount financed and spread over monthly payments, so they were difficult for consumers to spot, according to the FTC. The Napleton dealerships also falsely told people the add-ons were required to buy or finance a vehicle, the lawsuit alleged. No surprises there. We've heard all of those claims. That's right. I have found that the smartest strategy in defending your rights against crooks is citing case history. And now, even better yet, this outline we just discussed from the FTC puts it all in black and white. Some of you hate to have wasted your time at the dealer by walking away. I don't like to waste my time either, so I just shut them down. You can do the same thing by using these documents to put a car salesman and a finance officer right in their place. With all of this ammo on my side, I'm totally looking forward to a head-to-head -head debate with a crooked dealer finance officer. And that is coming up soon, folks. Is everyone ready to see Liz go head-to-head -head in savage negotiation mode <laughs> with a finance officer? <laughs> all right, uh. bring it on. Meanwhile, everyone should be teeing up the playlist Kevin put together titled THG's Savvy Car Buyer's Homework Cram Session. This video will get added too. And then, could I ask you to do us a quick favor? If you're on Facebook, could you visit our page, leave a comment and a review, and share what you've learned from the Homework Guy channel over the years, and then stop by our website, thehomeworkguy.com. There's tons of free tools there right now, and more improvements are added there daily. The free car buyer's guide is there along with the free out the door pricing templates for new and used cars. Also, if you missed it before, there's a red button that says car related calculators on it. These are great. Once you have your out the door price from the dealers that you email, you can enter your loan amount, down payment, trade if you got one, sales tax percent, interest rate on your loan, how many years the loan term is, and boom, you've got a total loan amount right there. And then there are two money factor calculators for leases, so you know what money factor you should be offered if you're leasing. For example, a 4.9% interest rate converts to a .00204 money factor. Pretty cool, huh? And while you're visiting our website, if you're interested in giving the best possible care to your used car, check out the XCAPS and Amsoil links that we have on the website. 13 years on YouTube has been an unbelievable journey for us, folks. By the way, we've got some freshly designed new merch on our merchandise shelf down below the video. Check it out and get suited up. And if you'd like to show some gratitude by sending us a tip, the links appearing on the screen will be easy to find in the description box down below. PayPal, Cash App, and of course, Venmo. To respond to anyone wondering why we do the tip system here at the Homer Guy channel, it might surprise you to learn that the idea actually came directly from our viewing audience. Generous people asked for a way to donate to support our efforts, and we first offered PayPal, and then other viewers requested that we also add the Cash App and Venmo because they're popular forms of payment. We have learned to like it because your voluntary tips do provide a good indicator to tell us how much you appreciate what we do. 
And even better yet, we convert your tips into more free services for our viewers. I also want to remind our viewers about our very generous offer for free car buying assistance, and that has been going extremely well. Any viewer who has contacted us would tell you that you don't have to blow your hard-earned cash on a paid car club membership. Just send us a text to 701-441-3399 with your name, and we'll be in touch with you. By the way, there's no problem with you contacting us months before you're going to buy. We can make you almost bulletproof in that time frame. All right, if you're new here at the Homework Guide channel, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. We welcome you to our family. And of course, please share our videos on places like Facebook and Twitter. Thanks everyone for coming back and to all of our faithful subscribers out there, you guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off with Amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. Once again, we're still earning your trust. See you next time. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.